What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Shutter Talk. This is we're going to call it season two because it has been about six months since we've recorded an episode, maybe seven, eight months. Uh, I fell off of it, but we are back today. We got Josh Kelly. Um, I I guess I met you through um, through our program. You hit me up, eh? I did. Yeah, one one time I got this message in class and you start we started chatting it up and I was like, hmm, this guy's interesting. Let me let me do some research in. And you were the perfect candidate to come on here and, and talk about some photography things and, and bring back the podcast. So uh, how you doing, bro? I'm doing good. Uh, thanks for having me on. I'm kind of yeah, excited. Yeah. No problem, man. No problem, man. OK, well, let's let's get let's get into it. Uh, I'm sure people want to know, like, you know, who you are, things like that. So just give us like a little quick backstory, you know, your age, like your name, where you grew up, where you went to school, you know, how you grew up things like that if you don't mind <laughs> uh, yeah uh, well my name is josh i'm 20 years old um i grew up a bit in ottawa uh the one i was six i moved to manitoba i uh, kind of grew up there uh just a small town it's called Portage prairie not a lot of people know where it is is that that's like farmland kind of kind of vibes <laughs> yeah there? it's just okay. just flat that's all it is out there okay <laughs> it's just flat and boring <laughs> Uh, so I, I grew up there. Then I once I graduated at 18, at the end of the summer, I moved to Ottawa to come here just because it's better out here than being in Manitoba. Uh, yeah. So and once I did that and um, then I did photography for two years, didn't really take it serious, kind of did it for fun. And then after talking with my brother, decided to take it serious. And then now I'm kind of just yeah. at that stage of working with uh, everything right now. Yeah. What's the, what's like the vibe between Manitoba and Ottawa? Like, I guess there's like, is it there like a city there kind of thing or is it? <sighs> so, yeah, there's like, you know, like there's Winnipeg. I've never been. That's the thing. So I really don't know. I've just seen like, you know, they talk about in geography and stuff like that. They're just like, and when, when you see Manitoba in geography, they just show like a picture of a farm or something like that. Yeah, it's just, it's just not a lot out there. It's um, it's kind of a hard place to grow yeah. or expand and yeah. do anything. So being like in Ottawa is just there's so much more vast like people and there's like interesting Watches, people like and that. like you can yeah, connect no, super easily through here. Was there any sort of communities out there, or was it just kind of like oh you know your neighbor like your your only community is like your little neighborhood? Yeah, you kind of know everybody around town because it's so small. You bump into everybody <laughs> everywhere you go. Line. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, um, let's let's get more into the photography part. Um, how did you get into photography? Like, what was the first, the main in- inspiration to get into that? And when and when was it? You said two years ago. Like two years ago, yeah. So I always did like video. Like I was always getting creative with video, just kind of doing skits and like funny videos in high school. Uh, so uh, I originally was taking a, that too, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's just fun. Um, so originally, uh, I did, I was just doing photography. I had a camera, uh, I was yeah. taking pictures for fun, kind of just with my brother, he wanted pictures and then I was shooting with friends. Uh, then I've always loved the aspect of like the internet and just like, like, um, okay. and people being famous on the internet and just the way, how smart you have to be and the thing, like, and learning the algorithm of the internet, I think is really cool. And I love photography, so I decided to tie two and two together and just being having that creative aspect and being able to just be creative and work with these people. It's just that's why I love so much about it. Did you did you start did you start on your phone? Like when did you get your camera? Did you were you doing photography kind of on your phone? Did you ever even have a phone? You know, some kids grew up without a phone. Like, did you ever have (laughs) have a phone and start on that? Or was it like you saw the camera and that kind of inspired you to start? testing it out like it was kind of like you know sometimes like that gear kind of inspires you to to go <laughs> um so like when i did like youtube videos um i used an ipad to record youtube videos for like the longest time and then i would just like use my phone and stuff to take pictures as well but that was just kind of for friends yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. i used to do that too bro we used to record like nerf first person nerf videos in our basement like the cringiest thing ever bro <laughs> Yeah, like I used to record like vlogs and I'd be like going, walking around with like an iPad or I'd like set my iPad up. My friends and I would do like dunk competitions and stuff. It's yeah, like all with like an that. iPad propped up on like a car or something. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, so I got a camera because I took um, a program at Algonquin for uh, for a year and then I kind of yeah. was just not really feeling it. So I kind of withdrew and then... Was it specifically... Fo- sorry to cut you off. Was it photo- Was it a photography program? 
Uh, so it's called interactive media design. I'm actually debating on going back for it. Um, what is it exactly? Uh, so you do a lot of, um, it's kind of just like, uh, making like logos, making websites, okay. film for tar- uh, film and photography, stuff like that. Yeah. So it's like, it's they just like a broad yeah. where yeah. like stuff in day and age is kind of heading towards is yeah. kind of what that course was. So I'm debating on going back to that. Okay. And then you left that. But you had, when did it, when was exactly you got, like, what were you, have you always been shooting on the iPad or like, did you get like a, like a DSLR or like a mirrorless or something? Uh, so I shoot with a Canon T6i right now. And that's what I've been okay. shooting with now for like the last two and a half years. Two and a half. Okay. So you got like two and a half years ago. You had it during your program too? Mm-hmm, Cause you needed a camera and they, that's the oh, camera they suggested. So when I got it, it was like, it was kind of, okay. yeah. So, so you came out of high school and you were like, uh, I want to do something in me. What did you know you want to do something in media or was it kind of like, you know, like, like I'm not, I don't blame you if you didn't know what the fuck you wanted to do. Cause I didn't know what I wanted to do. Were you just kind of like, Oh, this program looks sick. Let me go into it. Oh, I have to get a camera. And then it kind of all spiraled into you becoming a photographer. Oh, uh, basically. Yeah. Like I took it cause I like two like the two kind of aspects of video and photo. Okay. And then all of a sudden I was kind of like, oh, I don't like the other stuff. So I was like, yeah. kind of dropped. I, well, you went niche. You went niche kind of thing. Niche. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. beauty. Okay. Well, um, I saw on your Instagram and you call yourself influencer photographer, which I love very much because it's like a mix of something that's really popping right now. Like a lot of people want to be influencer photographer, but do you want to quickly explain what that means to you? Like what exactly you do and why did you choose uh, to become an influencer photographer? Unless you forgot to take that off and you put that a while ago, or are you still doing that specifically? <laughs> so like when I first started, it was just like photographer. And like, if you go down to like my first post, it's just like some like yeah. cool pictures of like a uh, manatee. Um, mm-hmm. But I've always like, I've always wanted to like work with people like on the internet. So when I say like influencer, that could be anybody who has a following on Instagram or is, on YouTube or like someone who's trying to be something on the internet, I'll work with no matter if it's like 500 followers or like 300 K. Um, uh, yeah. So, and just, I've just always loved like, um, cause I like talking to people and it's in the internet's always interested in me and like influencers I've always like looked up to cause it's, I just find it so cool what they do and how long it takes and the work. And it's just the behind the scenes aspect of getting to meet that person and work with that person instead of screen to screen. It's just like in person. Well, that's really cool because I've actually been thinking of something like it's a good it's also a good gateway to getting jobs because those influencers, you know, although at the start they might not be all that shit. But if you've been there documenting their journey since the start, um, it's like they'll you know, they'll they'll know you're an OG. So so they'll respect you. They'll give you jobs. And then also the documentation part of it, like you get to see over and over and over again. And also I think it's a really popping niche right now because like everyone's like, yo, I want to be a influencer. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and it's actually like really cool. There's a, there's a guy from Ottawa. His name is Kazi, Kazi official. Kazi official. What does he do exactly? Um, so he's a YouTuber, but he also like manages and helps run uh, influencers like, uh, like social media and stuff. And he lived in like LA and was like working with like David Dobrik and guys like that. Um, and he is recently, he recently moved back to Ottawa, like during the whole pandemic thing. And I, when I reached out to him, the one thing he really liked about me was, um, uh, I was an influencer photographer. Cause you don't really see that in places like Ottawa, Ontario. Dude, I've right? never seen, I've honestly, I've never seen that. And the second I read influencer photographer, I was like, this guy's a genius, bro. That is such a good niche to go into. Like everyone's like, Oh, wedding photographer, portrait photographer. But like when you go as niche as influencer photographer and an influencer is looking for photos and they read influencer photographers, like, yo, that's me. Let me hit this guy up. <laughs> yeah. Like, so they, uh, so he really liked that. So like, he wanted to work with me and he still likes working with me. And it's like, just because like, he saw what, what I did was so niche and he liked it. So he reached out to me. It's crazy, bro. It's crazy how niche you can go. Um, so you do specifically portraiture. I guess that's what what kind of um, includes. Yeah, I do. I do. Like, I like portrait photography. Um, the other like, like uh, the other aspects of photography I like and I'm like, I want to try. But right now I want to just get like really good with portrait photography. Um, and still I'm still learning constantly. Um, 
about like everything with photography. Yeah, that's everyone, bro. We're always learning. We're always learning. But what 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 do you think? What do you think you like so much about portrait photography? Do you think it's just like the most successful? Because the thing is, most people when they get into photography, they always directly think to portraiture. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I think. Yeah, I know. What you Maybe mean. I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. But I like at least when I think of photography, like you think of a guy running around with like five cameras strapped to his body taking wedding photos or something like that. What, what do you, what do you think you, you love about it so much? Why, why did you go specific to? Um, I think it's just like the getting to work with people, <laughs> getting to work with people type thing. Uh, I feel like I'm, I'm very personable as a person and I like talking with people and working with people. And, um, I just like being able to capture a person, uh, uh, whether it's just like very dramatic or very serious type photo. I just like, uh, just being creative and you can be really creative with a person with different moods, outfits, settings, and like everything like that. Dude, it is crazy how much like you can connect with a person just literally going to take their photos and then you're just talking and you learned so much about this person. And then like you develop this connection. It's like a weird, like a photographer connection is what I would call it or something like that. But no, like it's the longest crazy. shoot I've had. Sorry. Sorry for interrupting. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Interrupt uh, me. Like one of the longest shoots I had was like eight and a half hours. Really? One shoot? Or like it was just like a conversation. One shoot it was all like it was like eight and a half hours. Dude, and the best part too is like you meet this person and then they learn about you and they know like, you know, the kind of guy you are. And then they can link you with people that you would like you just hit it off with. Like I've I've actually met plenty of people and then they're like, Oh, you should meet my friend john or some shit like that you know what i mean and you meet them and you're like yo dude this is like the same person as me bro we should we should fucking hang out no it's crazy dude crazy. Um, yeah those connections are like it's like the best feeling because it's like like it just one thing from one person leads up to another person yeah. and just dude people li- people listening right now like who aren't photographers probably think we're crazy but but you you don't know it's, about it it's, you don't know about it's it. a weird connection that you get when you work with someone for so long <laughs> it's crazy dude um Okay, so uh, you said you were you were always like learning and things like that, which you know I think we all are learning. Um, I've seen I've seen your photos; they're great. Um, how do you go about how do you go about posing? Uh, how do you go about posing? Because that's one thing that I'm still kind of learning, and maybe you're still like working on it, which I guess you are still always working on it. But how do you go about posing? Going through poses? Do you like go on Instagram? Because that's something I do is like go on Instagram, look for for. Um, for like sample pictures and I'm like, Oh, re- don't copy, but like recreate something like that. So like, yeah, what's recreate your, just like the pose and stuff. Let, yeah. Yeah. What's your step through, through, through going through a shoot and, and getting, and getting those pictures. Cause I think posing is one of the most important things. Yeah. Posing, uh, it's actually, I feel it is pretty important. Um, so what I do is like, uh, I'll, so say someone is like, Hey, like I, I kind of looking just for some like business type shoots. Uh, like I shot with someone called yeah. Hayden Cashno. Um, and he he was kind of wants a, like business serious type vibe, uh, so we were going. He wanted like on his phone type thing, so he was sitting on his phone, uh, and I it just got him to like look at his phone, and then I kind of just worked around him, shot at different angles. Okay. Um, okay. So you like to stick with one pose and then and then kind of get the different angles of that because I've I've actually never seen people do that. That's yeah, cool. one pose and I work around it, um, and then we kind of go to the next visit like next spot and try like different positions there, like. Um, like sometimes if they if they're like leaning up against something, instead of just like leaning up against it, right, putting one leg up, putting like your hands in your pocket. Like I watch TikToks. Um, there's literally people on TikTok that are like, oh, like good positions for like uh, for like men doing this. So yeah. I get those positions and then I just apply it to my shoots type thing. It's actually crazy how much of an art posing can be too, because like. There is like, like if you don't pose your, your model, right, bro, like the body shape and everything just looks weird. Honestly, my favorite photos of you are the jumping ones. I've seen, I've seen a couple that you've posted of, of oh, people okay, jumping. Yeah. I'm like, you really, you, you never see that as a thing like that. You can relate more to like, you know, it's like you're with your girlfriend or I don't know with a friend. They're like, let's take a jumping shot with the timer, you know? But then like when you do it professionally with like a nice camera, you know, nice coloring on it and stuff like that, you can actually make a sick shot. It was, I think it was one with, with a guy with a guitar. And yeah, that's one thing I like about you too. You brought, there was a lot of props I found in, in your shoots. Well, do you have anything to say about that? Um, usually. Yeah. So that's my mu- musician friend. Uh, and he's always like, 
he's always like, oh, like some people are always like, oh, should I bring like other outfits? And I'm always like, yes, bring like as much outfits as you want. So we can change up the feel, kind of the vibe. Uh, and the Qatar, yeah, uh, it was kind of just like a mutual thing where we kind of both were like, I was like, oh, you should bring guitar. So he brought um, just an acoustic guitar. And then he was like, oh, like, should I bring my electric one as well? And I was like, yeah, it's a good idea. <laughs> this guy pulls out the shoe with like a car full of guitars. <laughs> we were literally driving and walking around downtown carrying an acoustic and an electric guitar just walking around downtown no but i love it because it shows that he's a guitarist and i think i've seen a i've seen anytime you see a picture that includes like like a prop that kind of like signifies what kind of person they are especially like a guitarist then like it really adds a lot of, of 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 drama to the photo so so what you were saying is pretty much how sorry sorry i lost my train of thought but how um how do you find those those poses? You said you were you like to work around one pose, but do you kind of like because sometimes I do this, I, I like let the model kind of like, you know, the model knows what's up and what's natural to them. So you let them go. Like, do you do you like to to, to control your model and shape them or do you kind of like let them go with the flow? And then you you work your magic with the angles. Um, yeah. So sometimes, it, yeah, it's like that. Like um, sometimes they just know how to be in front of a camera type thing. Like I work with the Ottawa Red Blacks player. Right, he gets his picture taken what like all the time during the season on the field, yeah. off the field. So he he knows how to yeah, pose. He knows what's up. <laughs> yeah. So when I'm working with him, he's just like um, uh, he knows what he's doing. But he really he loves those like dramatic kind of serious walking shots. Okay. So he so like he always walks towards me, and sometimes I like I get him to like because he sometimes he thinks it's just like walking in a straight line, but that side profile you don't really see what he's wearing. So sometimes I like sit in front of him, but at an angle where you can see what's behind him, but also you can see him. And it's just like, so it depends on the person, if they know what they're doing, if they're not know what they're doing, we kind of just work together. And I say, I usually just like whatever comes natural to you. I don't want like to make them nervous or feel uncomfortable. That's the most important thing Especially that smiling part. People hate smiling. So I'm always just like, I'm like, never force a smile. Try to make yourself laugh because that's what I would do. I try to yeah. make myself laugh or think of something funny to try to get people That's to laugh. What, when I'm when I'm shooting videos and like it's like a like an actual skit video or acting video and like the person can't just they can't take themselves seriously, right? Cuz like you're like obviously they're not a professional actor like if you're working professional actor they'd be able to do it, but what you you need to tell them is like they need to maybe like make themselves laugh if 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 it's a photography, but if you you have to like put yourself in the shoes of the person. So let's say like let's say like it's a, a super sad scene and the person just like lost like a family member or something like that. You have to kind of like, it's hard, but you have to like think of like, if you were to lose a family member, how would you be acting right now? And that helps a lot. You know what I mean? So like, like you tell your, your photographer, you tell your model, you're like, uh, you're a badass. And then the person will like be thinking they're a badass and they'll start acting like a badass. And then you get some bagging pictures. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, like it especially depends on like, um, so usually when I reach out to people and they agree to do a shoot, it's like, I ask like if they want any type of photos specifically, like if they want like a yeah. certain shot. Important. Uh, yeah, so then we, if if not, uh, then we kind of just work together, uh, agree on a, a spot, a place. Because like the way I like to work, uh, I like to find locations, bring the person there and we just walk around. Um, I don't like pre-plan, I don't like pre-planning a spot because then if it doesn't work out, like the photos aren't turning out, right? Then you yeah. went to that one spot for that one specific thing. Yeah. But just like, yeah, like, uh, I, like I go downtown, like one time I walked down like Bank Street, like, su- like super far because there's so many different murals and nice spots on Bank Street downtown that it's just like we went there and we just walked and we got like so many different. You have to think, too, with the weather and everything like that, like when people pre-plan sometimes they don't think about the weather and the sun conditions. And then like they pull up to some mural, but it's like harsh sunlight. And they're like, damn, this would have looked so much nicer if we did it when I was over here, you know, five days ago. And then also the point I want to make on that is like, after you've been a lot of places, because I don't know, you've been doing it three years or how long have you done the portrait photography? For doing it serious? Yeah. Um, Just do general time. It doesn't have to be like five, like three months and six days. Maybe around... Just before COVID started. Okay, just before. It was like, before. so maybe just before March is when I really yeah, 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 was yeah. going for. But like, even then you have to think like, you. I'm sure you've, you've 
you were thi- if you were either thinking about it or you would find locations you'd be like oh this is a sick place to shoot even if you weren't a photographer like sometimes my girlfriend just points out to me she's like oh this place is so nice we should take photos i'm like, I'm like yeah, yeah same here like people me, point me, things me. out i'm like oh yeah <laughs> that's a good spot so yeah like you build up this bank of locations which i think is very important for a photographer especially like a local photographer because then they kind of know what you can create at a certain location but if you don't have that bank of um of that of locations sorry um then it's good to just like walk down a street or things like that because then you can have full creative control and just like go ham and experiment and try different things and and like nine times out of ten you get absolute bangers you know what i mean Mm -hmm. i love that creative control aspect of photography very important very important um okay so you you just mentioned because you kind of i don't know if you messed up my next question but i was gonna talk about the pandemic so you said you started right at covid or before like kind of like right before around there oh really hmm. so so did covid affect you at all did, did like did i i don't know i was i wasn't really working during covid as far as photography as far as like clients yeah, things like, go but like i feel like at the start everyone was freaking out because they didn't know how it worked you know it was like mm-hmm. oh you see like, someone and you get covid like kind of kind of thing but now you know that like if you're outside, even if like you're in like two meters is good, but like even if you're in one meter, like there's usually a pretty low chance of getting it because the airflow. Um, so, but yeah, yeah. Like, did like COVID like, like phase you at all or like? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like it kind of did. Um, like I've reached out to people and they've been like, hey, maybe once this like dies down, like reach back out to me type thing. Uh, but usually uh, what I do is uh, I'll have my mask on uh, when I meet the person. And then as we get working, um, like, or I'll ask them, I'm like, hey, uh, it, like, do you want me to have my mask on? Do you want to keep our distance? Or like, like usual, just kind of basis, like making sure yeah, like none of us are like basis, sick, uh, making sure none of us are sick or anything like that. Then we just kind of would walk around and shoot. Um, then I, like, I, I like show them the photos and everything. But really, it hasn't really slowed me down. But when it got like really bad, I kind of wasn't shooting. I like was staying inside. But yeah, other than that, not really. Yeah, well, well, it's good to get those bases down to start. But then also, like, I feel like some people like see opportunity during COVID for different things, so they want to kind of double down. Which, which, I it's weird. Do, have you seen like certain clients like asking for like more photos, and then some people, like you said, saying, "Oh, maybe once this is done." Yeah, have it, has there been anything like that for you, or is is it kind of just like everyone's? Just nothing really changed. <laughs> um, I feel like I've been sh- I've been shooting uh, like a little more with uh, like certain people. Um, okay. But that's just because like things are start- they're starting to get busy because like right yeah. COVID kind of died down a bit, so people are getting more mm-hmm. busy. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, I would say just only a couple of people I've shot with a couple more times. Um, but other than that, I was thinking like. Oh, what the heck, dude? I just lost. I just lost my ghostly train of thought. Sorry, I was thinking Um, it probably affected like your your indoor. Did you ever do indoor shoots like in indoor shoots or was it all outside? Because then you would have had a pretty good advantage if if most of your shoots were outside. They've actually all been outside except for I think two days ago. I had my first like indoor shoot. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that must have not affected you too hard. <laughs> no, there was like like five of us i think there yeah okay well no no i've 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 done indoor shoots with if you have a mask you're usually pretty good if you if you stay as far and if someone's sick obviously don't pull up that's what i would say (laughs) make sure we made sure no one was sick first before we all were there stay safe and then also like i feel like some people would be getting like like so bored with covid i don't know this is a thought and it probably doesn't pan out very well but like people are getting bored with covid so they're kind of like trying to pull like uh, they're trying to start new hobbies, try new things. So maybe like some random people would be hitting you up and be like, eh, let me just try photography because I'm stuck inside. So let me just get some, let me try modeling or some shit like that. I don't, you don't have to answer that. That's just a random thought I have, but. Uh, I no, I feel know. like that's true. I feel like a lot of hobbies, especially have started picking up yeah. due to COVID. Cause. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's the thing. Like people are like, yo, let me start like a personal brand or become like an influencer. So they need photos right off the start was it, have anyone been like that like recent starting a brand and they hit you up for, for photos um do you know abdul from class yeah 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 Yeah. so i did i did a photo shoot with him oh really uh and he wants he i think he's starting a uh, like a 
gym wear type clothing store. Yeah, that's what I've heard a lot. Yeah, so him and I have been like kind of messaging and he wants to do some like video and photo and stuff. Well, there you go, bro. Exactly. <laughs> it's crazy actually how how like these this class that we're in like obviously people don't want to hear about the class we're in but like you actually meet you actually meet some people here's an example right right now um okay we're gonna talk we're gonna talk about a bit about uh influences getting photography did you have any specific influences it doesn't have to specifically be a photographer it can be an external person it can be your mom your dad your nan um and then why 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 do you think they inspired you so much (laughs) um I don't, I've always, I don't know. Do you, if you have none, if you have none, all the power to you, bro. Like, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> Honestly, respect. <laughs> I don't, I don't think a lot of people like inspired me, but like, um, I like Peter McKinnon and Chris Howe. Uh, do you know who, the, do you know who they are? Yeah. They're, they're both from Toronto. I thought Chris Howe was from Ottawa. Is he? I don't, I, I don't, he, talking he was in Toronto. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, but I always thought they were really cool and I love their work. Um, but they didn't really inspire me. But once I started working on photography, I really was like watching their videos consistently. And like, I still do because they just post and so much. Um, well, you're right because they, you have to learn from someone, but that doesn't necessarily mean they inspire you. You know what I mean? But yeah. So do you, where do you get like your inspiration to keep pushing and things like that? Do you just kind of like internal internalize that? And you're like, I got to hustle because I got to hustle. Like, hustle. Kind of thing. And, yeah, I, like respect. Uh, respect. Photography makes me happy. Uh, it's just what I want to do with my life. So I really just want to push it. And so, yeah, it's kind of my motivation. Update. Chris Howe is from Toronto. You were right. For some reason, I thought he was from Ottawa because I saw him do some Ottawa video. Yeah, he does come to Ottawa sometimes. Um, yeah, I thought he was from Ottawa there for a sec. Do you, do you have any uh, any outside of photography inspirations? Like, I don't know, uh, motivational speakers could be family member or it's just kind of like, it's just you. I, I'll, I'll stop asking this question if you say it's just you. I'm going to stop trying to juice it out of you. <laughs> um, I'd honestly say uh, my motivation uh, is probably from some of my really close friends and like my brother, I would say. Um, like my brother's doing really well. Oh yeah, your brother runs the podcast. Yeah, doing him, seeing him do well, and um, him saying like, "Oh, you like you're doing really good. Like, I love this photo. I love what you did. Um, and all that." And then my friends saying certain things to me, it makes me just kind of want to work harder. Like one friend, uh, his name is Sean. He, um, I was talking to him once, and we, I was taking some photos of him, and he said, "When you make it, it's gonna be so cool." It wasn't like if you do or whenever he said, when you make it, it's going to be really cool. So every time I'm working, that's like in the back of my head that it's just like my friends have like, they not just saying if you do, they're saying when you do. And it's just kind of that it's that uh, like external. That's such a positive. That's such a good friend too, like positive thing. Cause like even, even I have certain friends who are like, you know, like uh, if you make it or, or keep working, keep working at it. They're not like they don't know you're going to make it or they don't believe that you're going to make it. And it's that's actually really sick. Hold on to that. Hold on to that boy. Sean, oh, yeah. Sean, you're a beauty. If you're listening. To <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, um, we're going to we're going to wrap it up soon. But um, you like to edit. I think that's what you told me in the little form I sent you. Um, yeah. You like making your photos go from better, worse to better or what did you say? It was like something like good, good to end better. Um, do you have any, do you have any tips for editing? You know, you could say photos or specifically portraits, things that like how you've evolved and things that you think people should avoid doing when they're a new editor. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Um, I would say if for editing photos, if you're new, don't try to make it perfect. Don't, don't like, I will like watch Chris Howe and like Peter McKinnon and just like these other people Mm-hmm. And they're like professionals. They've been doing this for years. So I slowly build up, but never jump right into it and try to compare yourself to them. Uh, have your own standards. Um, uh, yeah. No, 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 no. That's actually, that's actually a really good tip. I actually love that. Um, yeah. Have like your own standards. Like I like see the stuff. I've actually learned a couple things that you have done and shown. Like when it comes to like, um, like contrast and fooling around with the colors. I gotta check out your TikToks and your videos. And um <laughs> Hey bro, we got a fan right here. 
I'm like, uh, I, I, like, I don't think I know everything. So I watch people like, like I've checked out your stuff and cause people that do these editing tutorials, it always sometimes refreshes stuff in my mind. Like, yeah, yeah. learn from others too. Uh, that's a big thing as well. Uh, learn from others. Um, and just find your own love, unique editing style as well. I love the point you made about like refreshing your edits because there's actually so many. Like if I really search in my brain, there's so many editing techniques I know and different ways you could take a photo, but you always forget them. You know, like right now I'm thinking like I completely forgot about like, have you ever done double exposure? I think think so it's like where it's not long exposure where it's like a long photo which is another technique that i forgot about but like double exposure is when you have like two photos and then like you know when there's it's like white and then there's a portrait and then in the portrait there's like a landscape kind of thing okay right yeah, yeah. you know what i mean like like I've, I've watched videos on how to do that but I, it just completely crosses my mind anytime i'm thinking about editing or photography so always like refresh your mind and constantly looking at those tutorials because you're not going to remember everything the first time if that if that makes sense yeah yeah like i've had to go back um i think it's called the radiant tool yeah like the one where it's kind of like like it 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 <laughs> It's so hard to explain. <laughs> fades no, it's in. Like the it one, fades in. I forget what it's called. It's where you can like um, highlight a certain area and uh, like use the lighting. Yeah. Okay. Change specific areas. Yeah. I've done. I've had to do that a couple times for like. Uh, I kind of avoided night photography at first, just because I found it very. It's very hard, right? Because yeah, they have to be really st- like. I kind of found it hard at first, but like. I did a shoot with my brother and the photos we took just came out like awesome. And I love the photos we took. And it's just like, uh, there's one I took of him where his face was like a little dark. So I just took the tool, put it around his head and just brought it up slightly. And then you could see his face in it. No, no. Night photography is so hard. And honestly, a tip that I got or like for, for filming, at least, I don't know if this relates to photography, but like actually what most professionals do for their nighttime shots is they shoot it actually during the day. And then they color it so it looks like it's nighttime because then your shot comes out a lot sharper because it's like daylight, right? You keep your ISO nice and low, um, but then it still looks like nighttime, if, if that makes sense. But that's actually what a lot of uh, professional filmmakers do. I don't know about photographers. They probably just shoot at night with like a f- crazy aperture or something like that. <laughs> yeah, like what a lot of like I've seen, I've watched videos and usually they got the tripods and they set up. Uh, I have a tripod, but it's like when it's portraits, it's kind of hard because I like that's so hard. Yeah, yeah I agree. So you gotta like I'm just I just try to hold really still, and I like lean up against on my like on my knee or something if I'm knelt down just for like that support. That's really the problem. I think especially night photography is when editing really makes a difference. Like during the day, you can get a good shot, you know, do a couple quick tweaks, but night, like usually your shot comes out and it's just like this looks like amateur as hell i better get on lightroom and start working the <laughs> working this image out or something like that because because you you got a lot to, a lot of work to do to, to fix that yes like some photos i take like a while to edit and then like some i just like i like just fix up a little and then it's fine mm-hmm. yeah no 100 percent. um do you have any tips for anyone starting now anything you want to let people know if you don't it's all right but any specific tips for people getting into it? Like into like uh, just photography or yeah, any... we'll say photography. Yeah, influencer photography specifically. <laughs> uh, rejection is gonna come. Uh, I mess. I think I've messaged probably close to hundred people, influencers, people verified. Uh, they've read my messages. Um, they just completely ignored me, or they've answered me. I message back, ignore me. Uh, rejection is going to come no matter what you do. Uh, so don't, don't get like butt hurt or anything. If someone doesn't answer, yeah. don't get butt hurt. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, even if you have just like a, like a phone, um, there's Lightroom for free on phones. So you can use it on, you can edit your photos on no, there. Bro, you know. <laughs> yeah. I can't edit on my phone. I can't. It's, it's hard, but the thing is people don't understand it has the exact same tools as this like literally $20 desktop software. You can even edit raw photos on them and like it's free. <laughs> like get Lightroom Mobile. There's like people use Visco because yeah. Visco is a good editing thing as well. Like, yeah, cool. yeah, you don't need to have a big, all this fancy equipment. I still sometimes just, I've like gone to shoots with just a camera and people are like, oh, like that's it. And I was like, yeah, it's still really all I need. 
Like, yeah, you don't need this. Unless you're doing professional indoor studio, then you need lighting. But, like, other than that, you just need a, your phone, camera. Start with whatever, you know? And what you got. Your phone, bro, your phone, like... Like obviously not like a fucking Nokia or something like that, but like the have you seen the the new iPhone twelve drop today or yeah. a couple of days ago? And it's like it's the dirty bro, it's crazy, it's freaking insane the photos you can get on that. Yeah, because like camera equipment's expensive. I've looked at lenses that were like fifteen hundred dollars just for a lens. No, no, hundred percent. There was a guy and I had him on my podcast. I'm gonna have him again, but he. He has a real camera now, but when he was first starting, he had um, his iPhone and you know those moment lenses? You know those iPhone lenses? He's using one of those? Yeah, and dude, you should... I'll, I'm going to throw a photo up right now. I hope, uh, I hope I can remember it, but the photos... Literally, that this guy was taking looks like it's taken taken on a like a full DSLR. Like, obviously, I don't think they were portraits because it's kind of hard to get that depth with portraits on the phone unless you're using a portrait mode. Um, but like even just regular photos, like they look clean. So just use what you got. Yeah, ex- yeah, and um, yeah, because camera equipment's crazy expensive. You don't need you don't need the top tier grade stuff to. Bro, and the thing is, you have to think. It's so exponential. Like buying, what do you have? A, a T6? Yeah, yeah. Canon T6. A T6, I, yeah. what, $500, $600, dollars, something like that? Something yeah, like that. I think that was it. It was brand yeah. new when I got it around there. But then, like, you'd think, was that, that was with the kit lens? That was just the lens that came with it? Or yeah, with it, or? I've been using the stock lens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to think about it. Once you buy, like, a camera, like the one I have right now is like EOS R. I think, I think it's down to 2000 bucks now. But the lenses for that thing, since it's full frame, are like 2000 bucks also. So it's so exponential on how camera gear works. So appreciate when you have the lower tier gear and your bank is not broken. <laughs> um, and I'd say like if like growing on social media is like a key aspect, yeah. but like likes and follow follow followers will come. Right. Um, when yeah. like and don't just because you work with someone big, don't expect a huge amount of followers because that it's that's not how it works yes. uh like sometimes you know like I'll, I'll work with someone i'll get like you know like five or six right then yeah. sometimes they'll unfollow me because i'll post pictures of someone different and it's just like so followers will come uh and just kind of work hard don't give up just because your photo gets like two likes or it doesn't look as good um i've like taken these. photos where i'm like oh my god what was i thinking when i took this this does not look good at all <laughs> but like always just work hard sometimes you got to drop those photos though because i've i've had a lot of trash that i've put out that people actually like really resonate with and really like but i'm like this is the worst thing i've ever made in my life but people are like yo this is fire bro what the hell i'm like no no it's and not you're like behind the scenes like ah this is terrible this is terrible bro <laughs> yeah. yeah no sometimes sometimes you just gotta let other people decide what's good what's not because in the end they're the ones paying paying for the shit you know what I mean? Paying for the photos, yeah. yeah. Okay, bro. Um, we're gonna wrap it up, but I have the th- two two questions that I ask everyone. Number one, you already mentioned it, but your go to camera setup was uh what T six with a uh, stock. Yeah, T six I was what I use. Yeah, works. yeah, and that's I use. I literally carry that around with me. Uh, I bring a tripod just in case, mm-hmm. and I uh, just use Lightroom, and that's my that's the setup. Do you of just today. have that lens, or have you have you gotten another lens, or you're you're still working on on the budget for that's that? That's the lens? only lens. Yeah, that's the only lens I got. It's not, lenses it's are not crazy nice, expensive. Bro, I don't blame you. Um, do you have do you have you ever thought of like a dream setup, or like what's your next like what what's what camera do you really want? Has there been <sighs> the one new Sony camera? I've been. So you're trying to switch to Sony, bro. You're saying you don't like those Canons, eh? <laughs> no, I love Canon, but I've just seen so much and such good things about the new Sony camera. I'm like, oh, I want it, but it's just super expensive. Sony is like, it's weird. Sony seems like they're ahead of the times, bro. I know. I don't. Like if you compare the top Canon cameras, Nikon usually just shove aside, but I know some people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's true i actually sometimes like i've accidentally almost insulted nikon before i asked like someone what they shoot on and then they say nikon and i forget and I'm, and I'm like shit i'm glad i didn't roast nikon before he said nikon no nikon is fine uh, but i'm just saying all the top cameras of each manufacturer sony just seems like they can pack more software into their shit like sony was doing isn't sony doing 8k on video, I'm not sure. I, I, I want to say yeah. And then like 4K 120. Obviously, the new Canon cameras have that now. But 
I remember, I think it was a, maybe a year ago, a year and a half ago, Sony had like 4K 120 and like the best Canon camera on video was like 4K cropped like 30 frames per second. I'm like, this doesn't even make sense. Canon yeah, is like Sony huge. Is like, <laughs> yeah. It's, and like people are comparing like the new Canon to the Sony one and the Sony just blows the Canon one out of the water with what it can do. I don't know. I think I'll stick with Canon, but still Sony just, they, they do, they do very well. Okay, bro. I love Canon. Okay, bro. Sorry, you were going to say something? Oh, I just say I love Canon, but the new Sony camera, I just, I don't know, there's something about I, it. Classes. Okay, bro, do you want to let us know, do you have any future specific plans? And then also you can throw your plugs right now, let people know where to follow you. Um, uh, When COVID's gone, I want to travel to LA. I want to go to New York, uh, in Toronto. I want to just That's travel. Nice. I want to travel, work with people. Um, and you can find me portrait by Josh. Couldn't get the S in there for portraits. So just portrait by Josh on Instagram. Up on screen. Yeah. Uh, you can DM me anytime you want photos. Just talk. You let me know. But yeah, that's, that's about it. As you've, as you've heard here, guys, he's a super nice guy. Hit him up. Influencers, anyone, honestly. I don't know if you're taking regular clients too, but. Uh. Yeah. So I take regular clients as well, but uh, I just post and like uh about that for influencers because that's just my mainstream of what yeah, i'm trying well to that that makes a lot of sense and especially like going to la toronto that's where you can probably get a like good amount of clients because no offense to ottawa but i don't think we have the best Ottawa's influencer the game, right game right now <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay well thank you for listening to shire talk guys i hope you guys enjoyed this episode and we'll see you in the next one peace